ready to record? Yeah. All right, I'll call the meeting to order. This is the regular September 14th, 2021 meeting of the Oaks School Board. We're here in the Oaks Public Schools Conference Room and we're also available via Zoom. At this point, I don't see anyone joining us via Zoom. So we will stand to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The agenda was in your packet. I believe most of you have a copy in front of you as well. Uh, are there any additions or corrections to the agenda? If not, may I have a motion to approve the agenda as it was given to you? May I move to approve the agenda? Is there a second? I'll second. Uh, Thorpe seconds. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Uh, recognition of visitors. We have all uh, if all our visitors today are staff members. Thank you for being here, Mr. Wentworth, Mr. Beta, Mrs. Miss Hall, Mrs. Stell, and Mr. Larry. Larry, Mr. Larry, Mr. Larry. Just Larry. <laughs> and here in the in the conference room, we have all board members as well as Mr. Getz and Mrs. Herring. Public communications. There were a couple of items in our packet. Thank you from the betas um, for flowers and, uh, given at the last of his grandmother. And uh, thank you from Deb Conklin and family and thanks for the plant sense in memory of art. All right, with that, any other public communication that's missed? Okay. All right, with that, our first uh, order of business is action items. Item A is school board voting areas. Uh, we discussed this a couple of meetings ago. Um, as you know, Ms. Heinbuck was elected to our board uh, last June when she was a resident of the city of Oaks. Um, she has since moved, correct? You are correct. You are now living? I we closed on the house yesterday, so we have moved. Congratulations. So with that, she has moved outside of the city of Oaks. Uh, in way of background, um, back in June, when we learned that this might happen, um, Mr. Getz and Mrs. Herring and I visited with our attorney. Uh, there was a short um, uh, memo from our attorney in the packet, um, some history. Um, back in the 1950s. Well, let's read the first the first item on the on the memo from our attorney. When may a school have voting districts? The answer is that for school districts that have never been reorganized, school board members are elected at large. She cites Century Code. Certain requirements for electing rural board members may apply and cites more Century Code. For school districts that have been reorganized, such as Oaks, board members may be elected at large or by geographical area or at large by geographical area. That is what we do. Each of us was elected from a certain area, city, city, rural east of the highway, rural west of the highway and rural at large. Um, but we vote at large. So any voter of the district can vote, does have the, the opportunity to vote for all of those positions. Uh, second question in the memo, what happens when a school board member elected by a particular voting district or geographical area moves outside of that geographical area, which is what's happened and remains obviously within the geographical district of our school district. The, the answer is upon the school board members move outside the voting district, the school board may, the board may declare to the seat to be vacant. She cites Century Code, and it provides that a vacancy may be, be declared as opposed to providing that it shall or it must be declared. Um, if the school board chooses to declare the seat vacant, then the seat is filled by the process provided under Century Code specifically. 
the board can fill the seat by appointment until the next annual election, or the seat may be filled through a special election process within 60 days of the vacancy occurring. Um, the history is that in 1958 or 59, 58, our school district was reorganized. Numerous rural districts, at least two or three, I don't know, several, maybe schools consolidated with folks and there was a public vote mm -hmm. um, and they designated some geographic areas where board members needed to be um, elected from. There was a subsequent reorganization in the early 70s, 1971 maybe, 73. Um, there too, I think that 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 arrived then at what is mostly our footprint today, other than maybe the consolidation with Corona. Yeah, yeah. Um, that wasn't a that wasn't a reorganization no. or whatever. So, yeah. so and in that uh, election. Um, there, there was on the ballot, um, the voters voted to establish the districts, the geographical areas that we now have. So we determined that we are justified in operating our elections and electing our board as we are based on the, the will of the voters in, the, in 1973. So therefore, Century Code says it's now up to these five people in this room. Um, having said that, when we visited with Mrs. Uh, with Ms. Clark, our our attorney, I asked the question: Would we should Mrs. Heimbuck consider this to be a conflict of interest and in and in abstain from voting? And our attorney advised that yes, she thought that she she should. So therefore, this board is now challenged with the four of us. Um, deciding whether we want to declare a vacancy. Uh, I also asked the question, do you think that if someone, uh, if we make a motion, if, if no one makes a motion to declare a vacancy, should we then declare, make a motion not to declare a vacancy so that it's perfectly clear our intent and not just leave it hanging? She said, no, she didn't think that was necessary. So that's all that I know. Um, if anyone makes a motion, I encourage you to have um, good reasons justifying your motion. Also, if you don't care to make a motion to declare a vacancy, I, I urge that you have good reasons to not declare a vacancy. So I just think about this. So when you got elected, Sandra, you, you had just... You would have lived in your current house now. I did, yes. 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 Mm -hmm. I moved in early February. The election, of course, I, I was there well before the filing deadline. I, I filed. Um, and, and yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I'm. Of the opinion that the district was set up the way it is, and I believe that we should follow that having the areas where you're elected from and how their representative council takes place. I don't like the idea of going away from you know, our geographical areas, areas either. Um, I think that's the way it was you know, voted upon. Whether or not would it change the vote, I have no idea. Um, but I don't, I don't have a good reason why we should be declaring a vacancy as far as I can see. Monica's you know, doing everything she should. She's, I think she's going to be an asset to the board. Um, so I don't see any reason other than the fact that we've now moved away from our geographical areas, which was voted upon by the people that can make these decisions. Awkward, isn't it? <laughs> 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 to be quite honest, uh, I mean, I 
down detail on the search for it. And that's why I let the curator I never intended to put you all in this awkward position. It's one thing that goals, but I. Right, I mean, I think the districts are what they are, but I mean, on the same side, she was voted in by everybody in all the districts. It wasn't just the district only voting position, so I think that needs to be considered too. Um, right, it's not like we're, it's not like the votes were all from just the city mm -hmm. district or the district. So, um, but on the, other, on the other side, do we, by allowing it to, the position to stay, are we setting the precedent for other people to be elected? And then move? That was my, my so I guess I don't want to do that. So if somebody could do that, as long as they stay in the school district. So I guess as long as we're clear, you're still in the school district. I'm in the school district, and I also am very clear that I would not be able to do that before the city at the end of the term. Right. I was given, well, I, I, I hear what all of you are saying. Um, if I think back, I can't think back to the 1950s. I can think back to the 1970s. Um, of course, I, I, I was probably only, I was nine years old. I probably didn't know what was going on, except my dad was on the school board and I'm, I'm, I know he was active in that effort. Um, if I think about why those voters establish these geographical areas, I think that the rural, the, there were more rural voters at the time. And I, I suspect that those rural farm voters and the voters of the patrons coming in from the wealth district and the other, the other rural schools um, wanted to be sure that there was plenty of farm voters on the school board. Um, things have changed since the 50s and the 70s. Back then, Farmers lived on farms for the most part. Um, now, many folks that farm live and, and own a great deal of farmland live in town. And, and we have rural dwellers like Sheila, who is farmland, oh, not in this district. Okay. <laughs> so um, Monica lived in town, but is in a farming family and, and now has just moved outside of the, the community. Just barely. Barely. <laughs> yeah. um, I I think that the this and 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 honestly, you know, up until just within the last year, I'm I'm representing the rural district and, and Lira and I just acquired farmland less than a year ago. Otherwise he, we rent it. Um, well, clearly both are from farming families and have farming interests. Um, I also looked at the, the ballot count and Monica was elected uh, by voters at large with probably four times the number of votes that I had when I, the first time I met um, voters from throughout the district, not just the city. So um, the state century code gives the board this power to declare or not declare a vacancy. And so, it, you know, this is not unprecedented. It's happened elsewhere and it's, it's in state law. Um, I personally don't see a compelling reason. I, I don't see setting a precedent as a really compelling reason because I think it's going to be extremely rare that this would ever happen again. Um, and I, I, I don't, I don't see that the district's interests would be better served by declaring a vacancy and getting someone new on the board. So with that, we've all had an opportunity to say something. I, I would entertain a motion. I'll give everybody a minute. If there's a motion, there is. If there isn't, we'll move on. I'll make a motion to vacate this. Okay, Thorpe moves to uh, declare a vacancy uh, on the city, um, the, the city seat held by Monica Heinlein. Is there a second?
Is there a second? Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion will die for a lack of second. And I thank you all for stating your thoughts. And um, I, I certainly hope that this, this is clear that, that the board the board not acting has put this to an end. Um, there may be other reasons in the future that that, that board members should we should, we should consider um, action against board members. I don't anticipate that, but I don't want this to hang over everyone and say, okay, well, you know, if, if, if Monica isn't voting my way, then, you know, we're gonna bring this up again. I suppose it could happen, but I think it's pretty clear that um, it's, it's put to rest at this point. You have something to say? I, I can maybe add a little bit to it too. Coming from a district that just reorganized, a lot of times when you go through reorganization, they are giving those specific spots for uh, at that particular time so that each region is is represented. So like a, one I just came from, they wanted to make sure that the rural district was represented. So they gave two seats to that, that district. Uh, and that's where a lot of those outside come from. Now that's been since 73. As a board, you may want to look at in the near future, do we want to dissolve that? Because it's not representing the same as it used to be back in 1973. That would be something that the board of the public would have to do, um, but it would be something that you guys would have to generate to put onto the ballot. So you may want to look at that in the future to go back to what Century Code truly reads, which still gives the farming representation the majority in, in this district. Just something to think about. Too. And I, I'll remind you, sometimes it's hard to find people to run for the board too. Yes. And that's so, why that's why they make the change. So, um, all voices are are appreciated. So, thank you all. Um, awkward but uh, necessary, and we still have five on the board for the rest of the meeting. Uh, so, with that, uh, let's move on to school board professional learning. We had before us last month or a couple of months yeah. ago yeah. Um, a presentation by uh, the state school boards association and dpi uh, promoting tenant leadership what are your thoughts i went and listened to kirsten Paisler's um, presentation that she gave at the boot camp um, and i pulled away a few things just from her little feel there that day um, i think it would be very beneficial for this board to get on board with this and um, do the training. I think it will help all of our stakeholders, especially our students. Why do you say that? Um, one of the things she mentioned was um, setting goals, the board setting goals for our, our um, students, you know, their like the testing scores and setting those kinds of, kinds of goals, which is something we've never even thought about or talked about doing is setting those goals. So I just think that they will bring lots of ideas to us that we as a board haven't even addressed. Okay. Anyone else do some research or give some thought? Uh, I gave it thought. Um, I don't think it would be a bad idea. Um, the time constraint, I'm gonna be honest that uh, I'm already, the way things have gone lately, uh, it's going to be very difficult to commit more time that's already taken two weeks. That's my concern. I, I, I feel I'll, I'll give it the time and I don't want to promote it because I know many of you are struggle with the amount of time that you already have to put in. Um, are there alternatives that we could do that may require less time commitment and provide some additional direction for us. There is. Um, one of the things that we I know I've seen in the past is a board evaluation. The school board association has a board evaluation where, and you adopt that to make it ours here instead of just a generic one. Uh, but that is something that I've seen where they, they've actually evaluated themselves uh, as a board and, and each member would bring it together just as you would do my evaluation. Um, or April's evaluation, you'd put that compiled together and then you look at that information and you would start to look at 
how do I set a goal? Where do I where do I need to work on to improve? And that's where you set your goals to improve this from that self evaluation. So that, that is that's another thing that you're seeing. And is it correct that the, a decision isn't needed on this to date? I don't think they haven't really put a deadline out of when they think that I couldn't find anything either when I was looking. I'm assuming that they'll do more on the convention in October. And I would assume that sometime shortly after that, when they make a decision. So I think that for the next meeting, let's give this some more thought and maybe and and dive in a little bit to the school board's um, evaluation process. It's on their website. I glanced at it a little bit yesterday, um, and, and and consider perhaps that as an alternative to a. It was, if I remember right, a full two day commitment by all board members, in addition to additional coaching or yeah, they have um, they have to have at least two full boards um, to do it, and up to four, mm -hmm. and then it's two full days, and then um, six to twenty four months depending on what you choose, and 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 those, so then that cohort would need to agree on two. There would be two days, and we we wouldn't get to pick the two days right. we want to do it. It would be set right. by the rest of the cohort and, and when the trainers could be here. That's my biggest concern. I I think it looks like it could be very beneficial. Concerned about that as well. So let's let's take another run at it next month with another uh, alternative. And not saying no to this yet. All right, with that uh, fire alarm update, there is. Uh, something in a package you want to lead us through that yep um, we did have a uh, buildings and grounds committee meeting, uh, facilities committee meeting, sorry um, and we discussed the the fire and protection that's going on right now in our high school uh, some concern that you guys can also jump in at any time uh, the two that were a part of this but they, they did recommend to uh, accept this on the grounds of safety uh, right now we had uh, just some experience that we've had in the past. One was there was a, the alarm went off and it led them to help me if I get this wrong. It led them to the mezzanine, but the actual alarm was censored off by something that was upstairs. Oh, I'm backwards. I'm backwards. I'm backwards. Yeah. It sent them upstairs, but it was in the mezzanine that the alarm was going off. So the sent the fire department one end of the building where the alarm was going off in a different end of the building. So this would help with uh, itemizing that and saying exactly where those are at. Uh, addressable alarm system is basically what this would become, similar to what's happening at the elementary right now. And this some of this new addition as well. Anything else you guys want to add? Oh, that would be the whole. So this there's nothing available for grant funding that might um, help us with this. We looked around a little bit, but there wasn't. Still look and see if there's anything that'll go retroactive. But right now there isn't a lot of safety grants. Um, there are, but they're big picture. So this dollar amount what was it, 27,000? They they wouldn't even look at they bought the bigger dollar amount because they're multiple Seems kind of big to me. <laughs> Not the federal but, government. But definitely <laughs> need it. So but we at, the, at our meeting we talked about it has to fit in. To already part of the maintenance plan for this year. It's just going to have to fit into that. We can't keep having volumes that just keep coming. That's our plan. All right. Uh, is there a motion uh, regarding the fire alarm improvement? I'll make a motion to accept. Clark moves to accept the recommendation of the fire alarm update. Is there a second? <coughs> Seconds. Rosenall seconds. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. ACT report or ACT test rather. And again, I question is a decision a decision is required on this today, is it not? Um soon. If we oh, have not. until next year. Um we this year was already set because that had to be going in already. Um, so that is already set. But if we wanted to change that, we need to make a decision fairly quickly. 
Uh, it would not go in effect this school year, it would go into the next school year. Uh, basically what's happened is because of the legislation that has uh, voted to no longer fund the ACT and they are no longer using the ACT as, as their data, uh, unless it's something that a school is selecting as their state test, I think they are using that. Uh, so they've just gone away from it, I think. And Mr. Beta could probably help give a little more explanation on this, but it, from the sounds of what I'm hearing in the field is it sounds like the colleges are not using this as much anymore just because it's, again, it's a one snapshot picture, uh, similar to what we've talked about many times about all these other tests they're taking. It's one snapshot picture where if they go and look at the, the GPA and uh, student attendance and, and those things are giving the colleges a better representation of who that child is. So they're really starting to shy away from these one shot tests because of that exact reason that we explained, I explained that once before. Any other questions or comments that would try to help? Right now, we're set to use the MDSA, the state assessment. But they, they can still take it, it's just on the own. Correct. And, and the school is still gonna set up, uh, I believe it's a two, two days, two weekends, um, but so the kids can still take it here because they have to go drive somewhere with fire or something like that. So there's still be, on-site testing is just going to be to the back to the school. Yeah. What's your input? Um, talking to staff, the nice thing with the state assessment is you can drill down to a standard. So if there's things that we're not getting, you can actually see what we're missing. The ACT is really broad, so it's a lot harder to drill down. And if you take the ACT and have deficiencies, you almost have to go back and start having an ACT prep test like this ninth grade and tenth grade. So you're still going to have testing when you do the state assessment. It's just not as specific as the assessment for standards. So when we talked about this, I think two years ago, we talked about this, Mr. Leonard, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, it was two years ago, that was the feedback we had, was it's nicer to drill down those standards and say, hey, here's exactly what we got to get to get better at. Compare the ACT where it's more broad and not really able to fine tune exactly where it is. It'll give you this area, but you can go down to the exact standard and see what kids got it correct and correct and what their answers were. So it's a nice way to see where you're actually Excellent, and where you're going short. That brings up your point too is they currently are not even used to ACT science as the accountability. So the juniors or the sophomores still need to take the science part of the NDS. So just be aware that it's forcing them to have to take the test. So we will know longer what the as of this school year, we won't be using school time to take an ACT test. It will only be offered on a weekend. Because it was currently school. juniors yeah. were taking it one. Yeah. Usually it was the day they got back from like a trip from within March. I came back from James or during this trip down or something. Mm -hmm. That's when the, the state used to pay for all the ACT testing for all juniors. It was kind of their way to have every junior take a test, but they set the date as well. So it was, it was out of our control of what that date was. It was automatically set. So are we still going to offer it then? ACT? Yeah. Yeah. So offer it, but they'll just pay for it on their own. They'll just pay for it on their own, yeah. Rather than and have them drive the students that want to go and have that for scholarship purposes or looking right. for four years, could have that still be the, it'd be the responsibility of the family to pay for it. Then we can schedule it appropriately. Yeah, maybe on a, maybe all right. else it's not right. state date, so you don't really right. instruction. Right. And from a current senior, they usually take it more than one thing, so they'll take it earlier in the year. And the one the school has is just kind of a recheck to see if they can get a better score or whatever. But most of the students usually take it even before we offer it as a school. Mm -hmm. Usually, with December date, a lot of them will take it. I think there's an October date a lot of them will yeah. use and give them kind of a snapshot of where they are and then. Do some more studying and stuff, and then wait till that March date is over and pass and try to improve some of the scores. But they can super score now, so they don't have to retake the whole thing. They can just take an area that they're low into bump up, which is maybe the last couple of years. Robert, did you have a question? Um, and this, yeah, I mean, it's been a couple of days since I read this, but I just don't remember um, <clears throat> that we're, as long as we're not. Not going away from it just because we're not doing well on it. I mean that that's not a reasoning, right? No, it, it's basically because the state has gone away from it. it it's not us that we could still offer it, but then we would be paying it out of the school funds. Um, 
again, I, I don't know if that's the right answer because now you're going to force everybody to take those tests. Uh, it's a lot of five and a half, six hour test, if I remember correctly, that spends the whole day. The students end up with the whole day of basically all they're doing is testing, where we could be using that as instructional time instead of testing time. So one of the things that I've heard over the years is that North Dakota tends to, to score lower, but that's because we paid for and forced all students to take the test. And if you compare that to, to scores in other states that don't have all students take the test, you know, only those students who have a true need to take the ACT test, i.e. they're bound for a, typically bound for a four-year college university, only those students take the test. Students that are perhaps going into the workforce or military or, um, or uh, career tech school maybe don't even take the test. So their average scores are typically high. Correct. This is with the main program. You never got weekends. I oh. did take it. Oh, okay. But we paid for it. And it was your option to take your option. I know I took it when I was in school on the weekend. I don't know if it was mandatory or if I just came to the week. Uh, back in the nineties, it was something that was optional. This was only put into place what seven, eight years ago. Maybe ten would be. Yeah, the, the legislature's there to pay, require and, and paying for all juniors to take it. So. How much is the test? Seventy dollars. I, I, I think it's yeah. right in between fifty to hundred. Yeah. All right. Any more discussion? No action is required from us, right? Okay. A decision. Only, only as if you would be deciding to switch it to use the, the state test. Okay. As our accountability. Right. And as of right now. We've already filed that. The issue is the state with the high school that had NDSA, which is the state assessment. Okay. All right. If there's no motion, then we'll move on to the annual compliance report, which was in your packet. Thank you. Really good reading. This is just. Uh, or we're required to file this. Uh, this is the one that has the little glitchy uh, that we we meet the requirements, but the box wasn't checked. So it shows that we don't meet the requirement. Or th that's no, not this. No, not this, one. No. this one here is just, it's a yearly report that has to be submitted. Uh, the principals both have to do one for the schools. And then this is the LEA, which is the, the district. Um, and I can't submit this until the board approves. Um, basically, that you are ready to submit it. So it's just certifying our teachers are qualified mm -hmm. and that we meet all the, the requirements yep. of, the, of the state. So I entertain a motion to approve uh, the annual compliance report as presented in your packet. Time Buck moves to approve the compliance report. Is there a second? I'll second. Thorpe seconds. Is there any discussion? Any questions? Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Letter F, tuition waiver slash open enrollment. There is one, um, two, well, yeah, there's actually a tuition agreement for a family that previously lived in our district, now has moved just, just barely outside the district. Um, and wants to uh, continue going to school here. And the other is, is this a new student from South Dakota? Uh, or is this, go, is this a more than, once this is the South Dakota one is done, is that perpetual? Yeah, she's new. Yeah, yeah it'll be. Uh, they, don't, they don't have to do it every year. No. Okay. But the uh, the open and well, okay. So are we approving both the tuition agreement and then the open enrollment for next for subsequent years? Yeah. Okay. So because the deadline has passed for our open enrollment, they have to apply by February. Yeah. Um, there's another a tuition agreement, um, and the tuition is zero. Um, so effectively, they're open enrolling here, but that only lasts one year. The open enrollment agreement then for the family 
we'll act on that as well, but then that's perpetual. That will yes. remain in effect. So I would entertain a motion to approve. So we'll approve three things here, really. The tuition agreement for this family for 21-22, their open enrollment application for subsequent years, and then the South Dakota, North Dakota open enrollment application, which is also perpetual. I would entertain a motion to approve those three items. So uh, Nagel moves to approve. Is there a second? Morning. Rosendahl seconds. Any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. I did ask April to uh, tell us how many open enrollee in or tuition agreement, how many ins to our district versus outs. And I think she said we have 28 students coming in from mm -hmm. other districts and two or three. So it would be three and maybe there's two more. So probably like five. So I can't pull a report to show the students that open enroll in. I only have a report that can show the students oh. overall out. So from my file, I think I counted about five. Five. That go out. So these, but these are. These are going, these are, these are going in. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so yes, two or three that are in our district but going in another district. So yeah. Okay. yeah. I just always think that's that's an interesting down. All right. That's all we have for action items. Let's move on to policy. We have eight policies in our packet uh, that are up for second reading. Um, Mr. Getz and April and I reviewed these a week or two ago, and the only one I think that someone that we brought up an, an issue at the last meeting was this first one, ACEA bullying, and we discussed on page, it's 23 of the packet, and it's the, what, second, second page of the policy under prohibitions whether or not to leave in, oh, but you have it up there, whether or not to leave in the words while on school property. And I think school board association suggested removing that and we felt it should stay. The board was concerned about removing it and, and we, our, our due diligence, we, we agree, we, we, we should leave it in, right? Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions on ACEE, -E, ACEA, or any other of the policies that are up here for second reading? Are there any other ones that we, I'll just read the titles quickly for the record. Bullying policy, family and medical leave, unpaid leave, open enrollment, release time for outside instruction, student prayer during non-instructional time, Student publication and freedom of expression and patriotic exercises. These are all up for final approval. Is there a motion uh, to accept uh, those as second readings and final election? I'll make a motion. Rosendahl moves uh, the approval of second reading and final adoption of those eight policies. Is there a second? I'm like seconds. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Uh, then the blue policies are first reading and we are recommending a second reading of restraint and seclusion, that's FCC and FFL Youth Patriotic Society access. Those were in your packet. Um, any questions on those or concerns that should be reviewed? I have a question with the restrainers. I mean, under mechanical restraint, it's listed very clearly that it's prohibited in the school. It is not under chemical restraint. Perhaps ever not. Uh, 
under the definitions under mechanical restraints is that prohibited in all public schools. It also lists out chemical restraints and the definition of that, but it is not explicitly said in there that that is prohibited as so. well. We would not use chemical restraint, I guess. At this point. Right. I'm just saying, does that need to be spelled out? Is that? I wonder if that has. Yes. Okay. This is Sal, please. I wonder if maybe that's because like a parent might be using chemical restraints, and that's a terrible name, isn't it, for that? Yes. Right? Yeah. But it might be that a parent, like we give medication to kids. But it's a constant process of the parent filing the paperwork. Right, but it says it's not standard treatment for the student's medical or psychological condition. It's, I guess, my concern with that. I'm thinking it's not like they come to school and we go, oh, here's your medicine for the day to keep you know, right. what I mean. I just think it should be spelled out clearly. Well, it's, it's a first that. reading, so sure. we brought that up, um, and and this is the re the language that's recommended by school boards association, and we can do some further digging to uh, alleviate that. I I do recall this policy was new, maybe five, four or five years ago. Well, I was going to say two, but I usually should double it, you know, when I. <laughs> but but many it, it was a new policy and about half the schools adopted it and half did not because they couldn't you know sure. they couldn't agree it was just something new um so so the policy has been around for a few years and i i assume that now these changes are probably in a response to how it's been applied right and yeah. what how how it's been experienced in the district. And we've had the policy. Yeah, and I'm thinking that it was in the original policy. Yeah. The chemical restraint the letter before. That was that wasn't something new that's being added, that it's not in a color, different color, it's in the same black color. Yeah. So My question was just why that's not explicitly explained that it's prohibited. I think that's because that's just the definition and it's explaining what it is. So you'd have to go further down to find what it Right, but under mechanical, it does say that it is expressly that it's yeah. Yeah. So I'm just wondering why the difference in the two. Okay, well, let's, I, let's, I, I would let's look at it. put it on to the fact that like almost positive it's because if you do restrict it, then anybody that's on ADH medication no longer can be at, okay. given during the school. Um, um, just trying to think of others for that. Now is one that kind of pops in my mind right off the top. If you were to restrict that, you would no longer be able to give that medication in school. Okay, I just wanted. Yeah, sorry. Okay. It took me a while to register it, but it'll come together. All right, any other questions about those two policies? Again, these are first readings. So we'll do more work on them. And if you have concerns, I have something, but I lost my location. I'll get back to you on that. Okay. Is there a motion then to approve FCC and FFL as first readings to be brought back for a second reading next month? So Nagel moves to approve these two policies for first readings. Is there a second? I'll second. Thorpe seconds. Is there any discussion? I know there is housekeeping to do. There's a lot of words and all that spaces in between, yeah. but, but there was something else that didn't. Wording didn't make sense to me. But I thought it was in the Youth Patriotic Society. I thought it said that so there's something in there that parents had to sign an authorization yeah. for that to happen. I find that odd that you can you can provide sex ed, but not a Youth Patriotic Society. You know, I mean, give the parents the opportunity to opt out, but if you're giving them all forms to fill out and then come back. Okay. We have a motion and a second, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes.
uh, the next four policies and one board regulation, uh, we recommend uh, adoption of a first reading and waiver of the second reading. The regulation would not require a second reading anyway. Uh, use of animals in district schools and curricular programs, family and medical leave act regulations, religious observances, displays of religious objects for documents, and holidays. Just a note on the holidays, we're removing the actual names of the holidays and referring to Century Cold. And I think April added that will not be included in the policy, but just for your information in the packet, she added the Century Code that refers to the holidays that will be observed. So unless anyone thinks that one or more of those deserve a second reading, I'd entertain a motion for um, to approve the first reading and waive the second reading of those four policies and one regulation. I'm but moves to approve. Is there a second? Nagel seconds. Any discussion? Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Uh, just a quick touch on uh, HDD gifts and bequests. Uh, we, we reviewed this, uh, you know, we, we kind of left it up in the air a few months ago as to, well, gee, do we have to, do we have to get the board to approve every single box of donuts that somebody wants to donate? And I think we'll, I'll let you take this one. Yep. Um, and we took this, April took this to, um, and, uh, School board, school board association <laughs> and they did put back i kind of put that into the my report on the, in the year uh, basically they said that the board would have the right to still approve if they wanted to uh, but you are delegating some of that authority because of the um, uh, giving to me to make sure that if, it, if we need to bring everything but i think it should be cleared up a little bit from the way I understand it from the school association, maybe just a little bit more of a clarification if there are certain things that you want to bring. The little things don't need to, if you like a, a good example of something that I guess I personally think that needs to come forward with was the naming agreement that came forward. That's something that should be brought forward. Um, do we need to approve every $500 that Robin is bringing in with the game time sponsor? I don't think so. I think that's something that uh, it's more of a sponsorship than it is a gift or a donation. Just, so just so you guys are aware, that's kind of the way I'm seeing it, but if there's any more clarification, if it's something big or if it's going to, there's there is uh, nine different things that are on here. If it doesn't meet one of those, then I would suggest that it come to you guys as support. That's, that's the way I look at it otherwise. Or if it's a big dollar amount or somebody's trying to like right now we're working with the track to get the track and field so that the throwing pits are working. they're donating the time labor and materials for the three paths all they are asking is for a little remember and sign saying that they they were a part of it i don't think that's something that we actually bring forward because it's just a metal sign that's going to be pushed into the ground <laughs> So you do approve the donation of the outdoor restroom that was left here. All right. Um, any questions on policy HDD? I I I think that it's good. We've clarified that the administration can approve uh, anything that you, you, you would question um, due to size or questionable um, criteria and bring that to the board. All right, um, starting with this board meeting, uh, moving on to reports, all department heads will have submitted a written report to the board. Um, we're talking about now then moving this up nearer to the top of the agenda. So those department heads can be here, answer any questions, and then leave and move on with their day. Yep. And, um, and I will, just so you're aware, you'll notice some of them are not here. I think they misunderstood me. I was planning for this first one for them to be here for questions, but from here forward, if you want them here, 
let me know so I can make sure that they show up. Otherwise, they, they will not be showing up other than the two principles. Just so you guys are aware of that. And I might have confused them, and that's why you're seeing some of them not here, some are here. But you should have received a report, written report from each one of us. Yeah, and Dave, Dave's wasn't in the packet, but it's on your um, on yeah. in front of you. I kind of feel like that'll be a recurring. Yeah. <laughs> um, I noted on the AD report uh, under athletic training, we signed a 10 year no charge contract with Sanford Orthopedic and Sports Medicine, which is not what I heard on the street. I, when I mentioned that I didn't think there was going to be any charges for that, what I heard was. Oh no, that's just for the first year. But it's a 10 year agreement. Ten year. No, thank you. Well, that's made too. Um, they're having a lot of problems with COVID right now in Fargo. So that's kind of pushed back the process, but they're in the process of making oops, tornadoes. I don't know if anybody's seen the ones in Chico Cass. No worries, but they have like a squirrel on them and it says Sanford or Why don't we hold off on having them make those though? Because maybe we're yeah, they want to get them up as soon as they can. And I don't know. They didn't know if the tornado was going to work because it would be so pixelated. So then it'll be the uh, the crash. The crash. Yeah. <laughs> so I sent them both and I said, you know, do what you want to do. So, and I'm sure if we wanted it changed with the new logo, if we end up getting it, they would probably do that. It didn't seem like it would be a problem. Okay. I do have one question. Um, Mr. Braybach did the Lego robotics. Is that position going to be filled at all? Does anybody know? Hey, any other questions on our technology, food service, maintenance and transportation, activities director, personalized learning coach? Uh, maybe we will have a Touch base with each of the principals. So, if you want to, yeah. And we, we should be acting to uh, uh, approve these or acknowledge, acknowledge these. Them somehow. Okay. Uh, and yeah. everybody's okay with moving the rest of the process out here. Yeah. Um, I'm sure everybody needs to go out. Oh, I'm I don't know. We're going to have to wait 20 minutes before we have our way to go to Okay. Uh, well, then let's just talk about the principal's reports. Uh, they were in your packet. Does anybody have any questions or any anything you principals would like to emphasize? If you do, I'd like you to come to the podium. I think that's appropriate. Right. I don't know if there's really anything that I wanted to emphasize except for I just gave you this this morning and oh, yeah. these are the cohorts so what I mean by that is so if you look at that whether you're looking at the map or the reading so this is this year's first graders their scores in the spring and then their scores in the fall so you can see how that summer slide affects us so it's very it's it's difficult and um I don't know how to else to recover that besides just participation and you know I mean participation in our math and our reading programs for the summer. But that was the only thing that I wanted to point out so that you understood that this was this year's first readers. Oh, is it um, I don't think it went in that I don't think it was that good because Krista's trying to find ways to promote it, you know, and you know, you've got your kids that are your readers and they come in and yours that are not readers, they don't come in. You know, it's just forever the way that it is right and then we offered summer school we paid extra for our summer school kids came the attendance is sporadic you know i get kids that don't come for three weeks at a time and then you know those are the kids that are struggling and then we have it's it, it's an easy cycle and it's hard to figure out how do we fix it because so much of it is out of our hands we can offer stuff but if people don't take it it doesn't you know it, it really isn't anything that we can what else to do but you're saying this is okay so the first graders are this year's first graders 
And this, the who was their scores in the fall? That was how many kids were proficient. Or, I'm sorry, in, in the, the spring, spring. In the spring. And the when red. When they were kindergarten. When they were kindergarten. They were. At the end of kindergarten, that, that was how many kids that we had proficient. And that proficiency on this test, on this particular test on STAR. And then the, the red is how many kids are reaching proficiency as of last week. So that's the tough part is we have so much recovery to do right away. And we played with the dates of our tests and so we pushed it back to October, but then the teachers don't have the information to do their programming. And we pushed it back closer to the beginning of the year. And then the kids just aren't into the groove of school. So we pretty much set it as we're just gonna do it three weeks, two weeks, three weeks, just to kind of keep it steady. So I guess you could skew the numbers either way, right? But it's nothing new. It's nothing new. This is just what happens every year. Yes. And how it, does, does the bounce back come? Fairly quickly. You know, if you, I remember from our, our winter, that so we test again in December, pretty much we have bounced back. You'll see very similar numbers. At least we keep our fingers crossed that that is. And I don't know how much of this is a result of last year with COVID. I mean, we had kids that were out 30 some days. We had teachers that were out. 30 some days from school. So to me, when I first saw this, I don't know, if, I think this is a little bit expanded, you know, as far as it, it, to the extreme, I don't remember seeing this low of numbers right away, but I think that maybe would have to do with, you know, think about that. If a teacher misses 30 days of school, the kids are, you know, not getting the same level of instruction. We had kids that were out for lots of days last year. So hoping we have more normalcy this year. and. Yeah. So we just need to hear school. <laughs> Honestly, I think probably would want to kill me, but you know, if you think about that, that's what third if you took, you know, a long break in like a one or two week break each season, then your kids that recovery wouldn't be so long. And, you know, but if you look at the just looking at the blue bars on both sides, even last last spring, our kids, even when their teachers and they, many of them were out for as much as 30 days, they were the lowest was a 59% proficiency mm -hmm. and, and some mostly between 70 and 80 and up to 90% proficient, even mm -hmm. with that much absence. Yeah. And our, so, I mean, our kids do really well and our teachers are very dedicated to just making sure that all of our kids do well. So there's a lot of dedication there. And I know when my teachers see this or saw this, they probably gasp because it's frustrating, you know, to have that backwards slide be so significant. All right, any other questions for Mrs. Sell? Anything from you, Mr. Beta? Yeah. I don't know if you want to hear about this later, I guess. Couple things to highlight. The first was our state assessment for science came back and did really well. Eighth grade flew out of the park. Tenth grade did really well. So I got a couple hours I got to spend on this again to honor that bet. Um, what I want to talk about is are you, are you guys going to talk about choice ready or do you want me to talk about technology? Do you have questions on, on that report and how, how that's shaking out for us? I kind of explained it in my report and the one so 21 percent of our holes that accountability comes from choice rate reporting which is post secondary military and workforce ready and there's also essential skills in there to sum it all up and then it ends on choice ready um that's due in june um and jordy yeah <laughs> so our council um Piles that, and that's a, like a year long reporting because that goes through like a four year rolling plan where you're talking to all the age groups on what they want to do once they leave the doors. So that's filed in June, and then we don't see anything about it or we get anything back until about the end of August. And so the state sends something back and says, Hey, in a couple of weeks, we're going to post this to the public on Northwood Insights. If you see any discrepancies, let us know. So I was going through everything, and I got to choice ready in our data is not available to the public right now. I just have it, but it showed that our post-secondary went up, our workforce went up, our military went up, and all of a sudden our essential skills and our choice rate are at zero. I'm like, oh, something's wrong. So I called them up. Um, first, I emailed them and said, hey, what did we miss? And they said, well, you didn't check the box on financial literacy. So one check box, which says all of our seniors take financial literacy, which they do with, in POD, um, that missing check box Dropped all the results to zero. It says you don't have essential skills and nobody's choice. Really, so okay, 
I'll open the report back up and let's check the box. But well, we can't do that. Um, so I got to run around from the state. I wasn't very um, impressed with saying we're using this as our accountability measure. You see that it's wrong. We're going to post it to the public anyways. I said, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. They said, well, you guys aren't the only ones that are having this trouble. I said, well, that sounds like there's a big problem then. Um, I said, I said, well, why can't you open up all the other reports? We do, we can, if you have an error, you can correct it. I said, it takes them two to three months to compile all the data. So that's that's not my problem. You know, that All that burn's coming on Jody and our school district to compile this report, and then one simple checkbox basically negates all those gains. And so basically, I got the run around. They said, well, and you called up a, Kirsten, right? And so we'll go to the choice ready training to basically voice our concerns. Um, yeah, it was just, it was unbelievable that this data is so important. It's so transparent. We want to send this to the public. That's how you're being held accountable, but it's wrong and we're not going to do anything about it, is basically what I got from the state. So it's going to show a 73% decline for us and that no targets were met uh, when that's not the case because of one checkbox. And so my result, my uh, conversation I had with the uh, assistant superintendent was, well, I want you to treat it the same as some STARS report that we have to file. And so right before you submit it, it does an error check. And if there's any check boxes that should be checked because they're mandated by law, you get an error message before submitting. Because once you submit the report, report, nobody can get back and do it apparently. So it's just a really broken process that's not efficient for anybody. So um, that's what's going to be coming out on our dashboard. Um, you'll probably hear from the public on why are those at zero you can tell them one check box is why and they won't let us change it so that's like a run around with a hole so if that box had been checked you're telling us that of the three measures career ready um workforce or workforce ready military ready and post-secondary ready we improved in all of those. those three are all higher than two years ago we had no reporting for 1922 to COVID because um, of the shutdown there. So that this was based on 1890, those all three went up. And yet our choice rate and our central skills were down at zero. So yeah, they would be much higher. Check the discrepancies, but don't tell us Yeah, why would they send it out yeah. to have you double check? Yeah, and that's exactly what I said. Yeah. So well, just if the case is an error between DPI and us, because I've been don't waste my time and send it to me to check over if I can, can't correct it. So it sounds like there's several schools that are in it. Um, the problem is probably just small schools. Like if this was a Bismarck or Fargo problem, we can we can bet that they had to keep opening back and back up. So a lot of frustration there. So we're going on the 11th of October to make our voices heard on that. So this one is more so. They kept at, at first they were kind of trying to blame it onto our training and we didn't do enough training and all that. We have. We've done enough of the training. It's simple and as simple as, uh, like Mr. Beta had said, you, you could have been scrolling across the screen and accidentally clicked on it, not even know it, and hit submit, and then that's what we're getting. Um, so it's something as simple as that that could throw our, our numbers completely in the tank, and that's what's happening. Something similar to that. The, the frustrating part is it affects the kids. That's, mm -hmm. that's the whole thing that just blows my mind is you see that it's wrong here and do nothing about it. So. To me, that board is a waste of time with the data, really doesn't matter at the end because you're not going to make it accurate. So, so when is this going to be released? Uh, usually, that's around here, the end of September, maybe even October, they finalize it. It just depends on the process they have for the feedback. Uh, judging by the conversation out there, it sounds like they're getting quite a bit of feedback, which is good. Um, if you have a report that has to be done in takes two or three months to compile, you got to figure something else out. It shouldn't take that long to abstract the data from that <coughs> inaccessible. So. We'll hear the talking points in October, I guess. So, but yeah, it's not a training issue. It wasn't like things weren't correct. Like I told her, I said, you ever had your mouse here and you move or you grab something and something unchecks or you close a browser window accidentally? I've done that. That's a good point. I'll do something about it. So, we'll see. So, we are taking our voices to the next meeting to hear the next training to, so that we can be heard. Baylor told me that, that the, at the train, they're also going to open it up to how to make this better. So that is why we're all three months of that this year. So we really wish everything is hard. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Rita? All right. Should we just go ahead and take action on these reports to approve or acknowledge receipt of A through F? And, and then uh, those department heads can 
go about their day if they wish or stay if they prefer uh, and then move on to the superintendent's report. Is there a motion then to improve, uh, accept the reports uh, from the technology through principles? I'll make a motion to approve the reports. Sort moves to approve the reports. Is there a second? I'll second. Nagel seconds. Any discussion? Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. And the reports are approved. Thank you for being here. You're welcome to stay or get to work, whichever you prefer. Uh, Mr. Getz. You have a number of things in your report to share with us. Yeah. Again, I'll just try to do the same thing. If there are any questions, please bring them forward. Um, I think it's important to highlight that uh, Lazy Unified is going to cover grant, the grant that we have received the last few years, uh, which helped cover Greg. He will, or last year, not two years, will be covering this year and next school year. So there's it actually extended by one year. Um, we did meet with Dave Reed and myself met with the engineers and architect to start working with the uh, windows and science room floor. Uh, as we were talking, Reed had brought forward that he was working with the HVAC also because that was something that could be used for towards ESSER funds. So we did include that. Don't, don't get me wrong, we will still have it in three different separations. So when it comes to us, we will have it where it's being developed in three different ways. Uh, but I figured if we're looking at the HVAC system in the near future, why aren't we using public funds to help cover that so we can cover the, the windows and the HVAC, potentially apply for a grant uh, to cover both of those as well. So now we're looking at a grant and ESSER funds covering those two large ticket items to hopefully down the road maybe lessen that load of, well, we don't have to do it now next year or we don't have to do it the year after. Where they're covered by federal funds that are coming. So that's something that you'll see in time when we get that all uh, put back together. It's it's not anywhere close to coming to you guys, but we will be putting together a, a CM, a, let's see, CM at, I can't get it right, but it, construction management at risk. So basically, what it would be is what that is, is we can approve us to put that out to bids. And it's not bids, it's, it's to put out to have contractors meet criteria. Once that's met and the board accepts that, then they would sit down with us and fine tune everything. There would be an estimate price in that CMAR, uh, but it's it's not a exact price. So there's that fine tuning. And then if we the people we're working with says, you know what, this would work better, or this would work better, that's that time to be able to do that. And then we come up with the set finalized number and project, then they move forward and that would be them at risk. If it goes higher than that, it would be back on to that, that company at that point. Questions on that at all? I have a lot here, so sorry. Um, April and I did fill the, the food service position with McKinsey um, Works. Did I yep. say that right? Yep. Okay. And she's started and is doing real well. It sounds like uh, it's helped to where now we have in the morning, Maureen is able to do two hours yesterday was the first day where she was able to do two hours of just social media. Um, and it sounded like it was, she didn't get anything that she wanted to get done, but she got a lot done. Um, so it, it has been a, I think it's gonna become a little beneficial to have her be able to concentrate on just the social media piece and keep some of these up to date. Um, another pro big one probably highlight on is Odyssey Wear. Uh, that's something that we will be moving forward with. And we're gonna do a test pilot with one of the elementary teachers and one of the high school teachers. It'll, uh, with just the two teachers, it's going to affect roughly about 60 to 70 students. Uh, and we're going to end up with a site license. I'm working with Barry to see if we can cover some of that, but we also can use it as credit recovery because of, or because we can use it as credit recovery, we can also use that 20% of the ESSA funds that we have to spend towards learning loss. We can now use that towards this as well because it's another tool that we can use in the summertime if we wanted to for for students that fail to use those credit recovery instead of sending them off to another place, which is we're right here in the house. Um, so it's, it's still a test pilot, um, but if it's something that works, it was this year, um, it was about 20,000 for the site license. So if we decide to move forward with that, 
potentially we would have to go towards that if that's something that is working. And that's an uh, annual? That'd be an annual thing. Uh, what this does is the way we're looking at using it is there, there's a pretest. Once you take that pretest, then it goes through that unit and it eliminates whatever lessons that the kids already know. So if the kids are knowing it, they're not having to sit there and be bored with it. They can move to a different lesson. Now our teacher can group the, these group of kids together that are on this lesson, this group of kids that are on this lesson, they can do many lessons with each group, and then they can also work separate. Does that make sense? So they're, it's really going to help with trying to get our hires higher and our lowers higher, and everybody in between. So everybody's going to be pushing harder to get further ahead, and the kids will take more control of their learning. I like that. Your website, it really looks like it fit well with the entire competency-based learning that we're trying to do. Very much so, uh, and that's kind of we were really trying to be careful with it because we don't want our constant based learning to think of it as just an online resource and other everything's pushing to online. We don't want it to be that either. So that's why how we're test piloting it is um, that the teachers would do many lessons still with the kids, uh, but they would also be able to work at home. Uh, another way that we can look at using it is kind of almost like a flipped classroom. So the kids would be going and learning at home. And then coming back and getting that the missed questions or missed concerns there. So there's that possibility of helping with a flip pot classroom type concept or a mixture of everything together coming together. So it's kind of gonna be interesting to see how this test pilot comes out. Uh, and I'm excited to see, especially with our it'll be in the science in the high school, um, in the physical science in ninth grade, and then in the elementary we have with the um kids, those kids that are like two or three grade levels above where they're at, you know, just kind of expand and enrich. So it's not going to be a replacement. No, it's just going to be expansion. So we got kind of two different directions going with that. We are moving forward with that. Just so you're aware, since this this was written up, uh, we found the answer would be a perfect way to use that. And also, um, I vary what's going to be a couple weeks before we actually get to sit down and have that discussion uh, when we do our convening. Then he'll let me know how much we're able to have as far as sponsor that. So, looking at as much best ways we can to cover that in any aspect. <coughs> um, roofers are on the elementary. That half of it is done and it still needs the paperwork, but at that part is complete. This half they have to re tear it back up because they found out that they were screwing into a quick creek, which is kind of like a uh, Mason made concrete pipe. So they were screwing into that and the screws started to let loose. So they have to now remove this side, the part that flooded. They're going to be removing that again to redo it like the other side, uh, the way it's supposed to be done. Uh, they did sweep the high school and they're working on that as well, but they're, they're not clear with that at, at this point in time. Any more leaks? Haven't heard of any more leaks uh, um, other than our entryway by the flagpole. I know we took some pictures, and every time we see something, we're taking pictures and sending it to hopefully add that to the claim. Uh, April is, is putting together real good uh, pictures, and they had to inventory everything, get a cost of what everything is. Uh, all those expenses are anytime that we have expenses towards that, she's keeping track of that as well, so that that goes back to that to hopefully get reimbursed for that as well. Um, another question that has come up is long term, is there something that helps us so like if we get in trouble down the road, 10 years down the road and we end up with mold, that was my big concern. And I don't, people probably heard me say it at least five, six times is I, I don't want to be, as Wapton closed down one of their elementary schools at the same time he came to talk. And I said, I don't want to be like Wapton have to close the school down in five or 10 years because of mold. I said, I want to make sure that if they're going to replace it, replace it the correct way. And it sounded like they were going to replace most of the ceiling inside that classroom. Um, anything that was wet or, or moisture that could potentially create mold, they, it looks like they're going to try to give us reimbursement for it. Um, obviously, the check will come to us. We would be responsible to do the work and get that lined up, uh, but it, we would receive a check at the end. Um, as far as the plumbing, uh, they were doing real good this weekend. We got it back to where everything's about half full, uh, right? And we got the sewer line back online. So our teachers were very happy yesterday. Uh, <laughs> a number of them stopped me and said, you don't know how well it uh, is appreciated to have plumbing back. And I, I agree, it, is, it has been nice and uh, low less quiet and constructive 
going back and forth through the school. I give a lot of credit to my elementary teachers for, for the patience that they have. They, they deserve a, a big kudos along with the kitchen staff. It has been huge for them to be able to do what they have done. Uh, they are, are making miracles happen. I'm just saying that's probably the easiest way to say it. Uh, they still are without a kitchen because they have pipes to hook up in there as far as the drains and making sure everything's flowing right. Uh, but everything was going into the sewer system and as a district. So all, all the big stuff. The big stuff. Is the big stuff is all in underground. We ran into problem so after problem yeah. with this project. I know yesterday we ended up pulling them off to go down to the upper elementary because we had lines plugged down there. Um, and we found out that we had water trying to run uphill, uh, so that doesn't work. So they were down there working, uh, and this would be something that potentially would be extra because that was, I pulled them off of this job to come get this job, <laughs> just so you're aware. Um, so there may be an extra bill coming for that, uh, just to, to be heads up on that. Now, the extra stuff like the groundwork that was extra dirt work, the asbestos, the drain that was the freezer in the in the back room that was draining just into the tunnels that was down there and it's starting to create rust and corrosion on the metal pieces that are holding the floor up so we, he's now going to correct that and get that to go into the drain uh, some of those extra things he, there's one hole that they are not the, the hole that they're going to put by the janitor's closet they are eliminated they eliminated that hole because he was Concerned about, he, he told me right away, he goes, We're worried about finances. We want to try to cut expenses. And he was trying to really cut back and was trying to come in under budget with what he was trying to do for you. Um, and so basically, the cost of that hole uh, is going to partially take care of the expenses, the extra expenses. He said, But he will not, according to what he said yesterday, for anything extra for that project. He does not want to go anything higher, so he's eating anything extra. He so said, if you want to itemize it, he will, but then it's going to cost you more because he knows that those numbers are going to come in quite a bit higher. Uh, so just be aware. He, I said, nope, you just go ahead and keep doing what you're doing, and, and we'll we'll get there. He's going to still itemize it for us, but the extra work, uh, but he's not going to price out those itemizations. So there was um, the first pipe that went in from the hallway to the workroom. That one, they ended up digging out underneath the concrete and eight feet this way and about six and a half, seven feet this direction. So there was only a few feet that were they were able to actually pull the pipe through. And that's where the first part of the problem became uh, as far as when they pulled the pipe in. So once they got that in, then they had extra. So that's extra excavation that they had. Uh, and you know what that was the major expense of this project was the excavation. Uh, and he's eating a lot of that. So just be aware of that. Do they have a timeline on the kitchen? They're hoping to end this week, but he stopped giving me timeline because every time he does, another complication comes up. Um, and that's why about two weeks ago, he always played in giving any more timelines. And that's because he would not give them to me anymore because he said every time we did, we got another problem. So I do know that they were open. He was here all weekend working at 10 o'clock on Saturday. I think he finally stopped. And Sunday, he was back by 8. They are trying to do everything they can for us. Um, uh, they've worked well with Jared, and Jared said they've worked well with him, um, verse vice versa. So they, but at the same time, it's still there's there's fun there. We did have the health inspector came in, um, and we addressed all those things. Uh, the, the big one was the hand sanitizer, the hand washing station. We need to add that, so we brought in a, an extra sink from that basically the pump on the foot. And they can wash their hands so they have a hand sink. Jared said, Well, they hit me on that every time. So, <laughs> so that's one that obviously is never a fun one to wear a mess with, but we did get that. Uh, and then also the where we were washing. They wanted us to move to a different location. So Jared took care of it. The the roof, the south part of the roof, that's all one key trip. What do you mean by that? Where they're gonna pull up the whole the whole membrane to remove all the screws. That's not on us. No, correct. Okay. That's yeah. what I'm sure. No, it's warranty, yeah. but it's it, it, according to what he told me is there should be no additional cost. Right. That's that, that's what we give. Yeah. They're they're basically redoing half the roof. Yeah. And that's what we're not going to be charged. For. And I'll be honest with you, that's a project I inherited, so I, yeah. I'm not quite sure I'm 
totally understand where the costs were or anything like that. I, I just know that when I talked to him, he was saying that when they started the south or the north half of the elementary, or excuse me, the kitchen, north half of the kitchen, they said that there would be no additional cost because they did have to come in and cut that off and everything. Okay. Uh, that's what he told me, y'all. You know, and that was Jerry, the owner. Okay. Any more questions? Are you are you finished? Yeah, that's what I'm planning. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. What's the status of our mental health <clears throat> with Stanford? Anybody? Anything new? Nothing new at this point. Okay. Um, basketball coach, real source today. Still working on it. No more applicants. No, not yet. I've heard uh, heard there is one that was going to apply, but I haven't seen big work on that yet. If we don't get anybody, I, I keep teasing Mr. Beta that maybe we should co co ahead coach it, and, and he said, "No, probably not." <laughs> so, um, I, if worst comes worst comes to worst, I, I have coached in the past. If the board is willing to allow me to do that, I guess I would be a worst case scenario. I'd rather see if there's community to give them first option. Brian, you seem like you need some help too. I do. <laughs> <laughs> He's elementary. <laughs> yeah, I would prefer to have a community member take that over, but there has been a couple of people I've talked to. That are, I would prefer whether it be staff or community that it's someone who's in it for the long haul. Correct. And I, right. I think you are probably a fine coach. I think you've got your hands full. I would discourage you from from doing that. I just think we need we need some stability in those positions yep. to. To, to be successful in the long run. I just don't want to leave the girls with them. I, I know we also, yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's why right. I say one last, absolute last, last resort. So, all right. Uh, would you like us to approve your report or? It's up to you guys. Okay. Um, Probably should since you did the other yeah. two. All the right. Is, uh, so, if there are no more questions, is there a motion to approve Mr. Getz's report today? I'll make a motion. Rosendahl moves. Is there a second? Second. Nagel seconds. Any discussion? Any further questions or discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. The report is approved and we'll move on to the minutes. There were minutes in your packet from our last regular but not our special. Those were sent later. So um, <laughs> yeah, I like it. it's a <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting on August 10th and the special on August 17th, which were received separately? I'll move to approve uh, Heimbach moves to approve the minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. Thorpe seconds. Is there any discussion? Any questions about those minutes, proposed changes, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Motion passes. The minutes are approved. We'll now look at the three financial reports, the reconciliation, the balance sheet, and the revenue and expense report. They were in your packet. Any questions or discussion or highlights on those? Still early in the year, <laughs> but we look really good. <laughs> we really like it. All right, is there a motion to approve those three financial reports? So, um, Nagel moves to approve the financial reports. Is there a second? Second. Rosendahl seconds. Is there any discussion? Any questions or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. Motion passes. Approval of bills. There were bills in your packet as well as a number of bills sent out by email yesterday to be approved. Um, I just got to opening that up. Give you a moment to look at it. Maybe I like my own. Here, I got this one too. I think I probably have a lot of my emails to you. Yeah, I think you're not going to let you forget them. Yeah, yeah. So when I type into you, that always grabs the wrong one. I didn't get it. 
Is any kickback? Nope, she's got it. Okay, is there a motion to approve the bills, both those in your packet as well as those um, on the separate email? I'm but moves to approve. Is there a second? Second. Rosendahl seconds. Any discussion? Questions? Anything that needs to be brought forward, highlighted? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the bills, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion passes. Uh, I have just a couple of announcements for the good of the order. Uh, tomorrow, there's an MD School Boards Association webinar on business manager evaluations. Um, that's something that we need to do. We are not required <laughs> to do it by law, but it's the right thing to do. So um, I'd like to get that scheduled sometime in the future. Um, and I'm hoping I've registered for the webinar and I hope I get to. Okay. Um, so we'd like to get that done. Um, the School Boards Association Convention is October 28th and 29th. Um, you, Monica, will need to go as a new school board member. And I think registration is, did I say that wrong? My registration is open, it's online only, but they only want one person from each district to complete the registration. So if you're gonna go, let me know, and then I'll register. But yeah, they don't want everyone to register themselves as your guys supposed to do it online and they don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. Are you planning to go? Online. Registration. Registration's so online. I yeah. Like to, uh, it's usually something different. Yeah, there's a law seminar. In the I, I'm not sure yet, but uh, um, uh, just a reminder our superintendent evaluation must be done by our November meeting, I believe. So we'll be. Um, that you'll definitely be getting materials about that by the next meeting or or, or shortly after the October meeting. Um, future meetings of in three minutes, we have the budget hearing. I'm sure there are um, you know hordes of people outside the door waiting to get into that. Um, our next regular meeting is Tuesday, October the 13th at 7 a.m. Well, yeah. Well, okay. Anything else for the good of the order? Well, so then November 9th would be the next one. Yes. Problems with those dates? No, this one make sure. Okay. All right. Um, with that, um, we'll take a out of five minute recess. Or we'll we'll adjourn for five minutes because this, this meeting will be over and we'll have a new is, uh, I don't know. If, is the budget hearing available by Zoom? Yeah. Okay. It'll be the same. Okay. All right. And nobody joined us, but I saw the entire time. So we must be doing a great job. <laughs> so with that, um, the regular school board meeting is adjourned.